Hi. Is it working? There it is. Good morning. It's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Oh, what a morning. We got like a foot of snow here or 0.3 meters of snow here. It is crazy. Um, we are waiting to see if Blue Origin is going to be launching their NS10 here any minute. I don't have a live stream pulled up from them. But in the meantime, you know what that means? We get to do a little pre-launch preview. Oh, it looks like we might have them pulled up. Hold on. I'm going to make sure I have this up in the background. One moment. Just making sure I'm staying on top of things. Thank you, Loopy. All right. I've got it. We have a stream. We're going to be able to do something today. Okay. Meanwhile, here we go. Pre-launch preview. This wasn't actually up in my... um in the When you click on pre-launch previews, um, this didn't show up because there is not an API for suborbital flights. Uh, so there's actually not a good way to uh, integrate this into our thing is our, our normal pre-launch preview page here. If you're curious, those of you that use this, which thank you for using this and checking this out. Um, if you go to everydayastronaut.com slash pre-launch preview, look at this. Um, yeah, this will show you upcoming launches in your local time zones and in, you know, uh, UTC and all that stuff too. Um, and uh, this is all done by an API. So we just pull from launch library uh, .net or just launch library dot library dot people for things 
Anyway, this mission unfortunately didn't pull up, so I'm we had to have it just on our main page. Thanks, John, for getting this ready. Um, but uh, uh, mm, why why aren't you scrolling now? Reload it. <laughs> this is gonna be one of those mornings, isn't it? I've had two streams now in a row where it's like, yeah, that's not gonna work. Nah, nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Looks like is my website crashing? Is that what's going? So I have this internet page thing with the facts for people to do when you need facts for your rockets and stuff, but the internet page doesn't seem to want to exist anymore. Um, oh, wow. Welcome to my live stream of how to load a website. <laughs> Jeez. Why is nothing going right lately? Maybe it's all the snow. Get out of here. Well... Let's start off with, in the meantime, while this loads for four hours, Stormbear. Tim, I had my interview at Blue last week. In this in this stressed out, refreshing email every two minutes mode, wanted to say thanks for the content over the years. Well, dang, thanks, Stormbear. That's awesome. I hope that, that, uh, that your interview went well. Congratulations on getting an interview there. Um, so we might have to go without the, the pre-launch preview for now. I'm just going to kind of tell you about this mission. This is NS10. This is the 10th launch of New Shepard NS. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um, nice and easy. This is the, uh, this is going to be taking off here in about 20 minutes. Now these New Shepard flights are suborbital. Here we go. My pre-launch preview is ready. It just had to cook. It had to get, you know, all ready. Okay, so this is taking off at 8.50 central time. So central with me. That's because they launch out of Texas. We'll get to that don't skip ahead, Tim. Come on, you can do this. So 1450 UTC is the intended launch time. They might push back a little bit. They don't have like a they're not rendezvousing with anything since it's a suborbital flight. They can go whenever they whenever they please, whenever things uh, all look good. So um yes, yeah, so this is NS 10th, the 10th launch of the new Shepard rocket. Obviously, this is by Blue Origin. Um this is Blue Origin and NASA has a payload on this. This same payload also flew a microgravity experiment. Um, with Virgin Galactic, actually, at the end of uh, 2018. So it's cool to see it was actually going to go uh, to, like, doing, like, four minutes of microgravity on both Virgin Galactic and New Shepard, like, right away. It's super crazy fast. It was crazy. Um, anyway, okay, so uh, NASA has a payload on this. There might be some other smaller uh, microgravity experiments as well. Uh, the rocket, of course, New Shepard. Launch location is Culberson County in West Texas. This is basically in the middle of nowhere, uh, which is not a bad idea when you're, you know, flying a highly explosive rocket around uh, very high. Payload mass, unknown. We do not know how heavy any of this stuff is. Uh, this is going suborbital. Uh, they do attempt to recover the first stage, and by attempt, I mean they pretty much will. I mean... They have only lost one. It was their very first one, um, and they just ran out of hydraulic fluid. Ever since then, the next nine launches have all been recovered, um, most of them reused, although this um, this is the third iteration of their new Shepard. So the first one, the first rocket they, again, lost. The second one they flew five times, I believe. This is their third version. Uh, this is the fourth launch of that. So let me do the math. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, okay, so the first stage will land right near their launch site. There is no fairing on this vehicle, so therefore no fairing to cover. There's also no upper stage. Uh, it's just a single stage vehicle um, going to suborbit. So yes, not single stage to orbit. People often think, well, it's going to space. Suborbital space and space are, are different. Um, I mean, yeah. So uh, where to watch? We're going to have this pulled up, ready to go here. Hopefully any minute. Looks like we, uh, we're just kind of waiting for them. And of course, here is the graphic by Jeff Barrett. Again, this is a nice, easy way just to just to kind of look at this stuff. Um, and the important thing is here, guys, this is just the very, very beginning. Um, here, I'm gonna do this. Uh, oh, burr, 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 bump. Um, this is just the very, very beginning, the first step for uh, Blue Origin. I did a video all about their New Glenn rocket. New Glenn is going to be a beast. Like an ab, they're going from they're. Go <laughs> Okay, not to use my stupid, um, I don't know if you guys were here for the last live stream when I, when I showed off my, um, mistake of a rocket that I was supposed to make, um, I basically actually, I got ripped off from a Chinese manufacturer, I was trying to order some cool everyday astronaut, um, models, and they showed up this big, 
But now we have a good demonstration. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I have like 60 of these probably highly toxic uh, things. But they're basically going from something like this to something about like this. I mean, the scale of what they're doing is unbelievable. Um, they're going from a tiny rocket not any bigger than the landing legs of a Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy. And then the the crazy thing is this new Glenn is uh, is going to be bigger in all aspects than uh, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy. Uh, more capable than Falcon Heavy uh, in full reusable mode. Falcon Heavy mo has more thrust, but thrust doesn't always matter. Um, you know, specific impulse matters. Total Delta V matters, especially when you're talking about getting stuff out to geostationary orbit. That's when... Uh, having a, a very efficient upper stage, you know, in this case, they use, they'll use a Hydrolox upper stage. It's basically like their upper stage is almost like um, a variant somehow of their new Shepard and that it uses that same BE3 uh, little engine, but vacuum optimized. Uh, I believe it uses, it uses a pair of those. Actually, we should watch their, their latest video. Maybe they'll show it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I personally, in, in my opinion, I, I can't wait to see that thing fly. And that's coming along very, very, very far so it's not a paper rocket i had a lot of criticism people saying you know why why are you comparing a paper rocket compare and you didn't even bring up you know bfr or all this stuff first off it's far enough along that it has it already has an air force contract so don't forget about that they they are on the same exact page there's a reason i compared those five rockets it's because all five of them are compete have already won contracts are already flying for the air force so that's why i chose the falcon heavy delta four heavy the Vulcan rocket, um, the uh, uh, Antar, oh, what is that thing called? I don't remember. <laughs> it's too early. And New Glenn, uh, the Omega rocket, that's what it was. Um, those all are going to be like in 2020, 2020, more like 2021, those are going to be the rockets flying Air Force missions. So it seems natural to pit them against each other. You know, the, the BFR hasn't won any contracts other than New Moon. So, um, yeah, um, Matthew Waters, no, I haven't done anything on the X3 ion engine. There's a lot of stuff out there about that. Um, uh, maybe someday I'll talk about ions and different, uh, different advanced propulsion units, but nothing specific to the X3 or anything yet. Um, I'll add it to the list. <laughs> um, Gibson Ost, hey, is your music royalty free? Love the show. Gibson, yo, uh, I, I like when people, especially if you're a small creator, Use my music. You won't get a copyright strike. It's not, I don't have it set up that way. Like, I made it so you won't get a copyright strike for using my music. Please, if you use my music on any of your, like, say you're doing Kerbal or other educational videos or whatever, just do on-screen credit and a credit in the description. However, if it's a business um, and you are, it's a commercial endeavor, please reach out to me. I'll, I'll, we'll work out a licensing arrangement. Um, that's mostly just so it's fair to other businesses that do license it. But if you're a small creator... Feel free, guys. That's that's my gift to you. That's what's the point of making music if you don't want people to use it. So yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, you won't you won't get like pulled or anything. Um, uh, yeah. So so I'm make sure and send me a link though. I like seeing where the music ends up. It's kind of cool to see it in like random videos because I'm so used to it. I'm trained when I hear my music to think of my videos. So it's fun to see my music in other people's videos and like get a whole different mindset. So I think that's cool. Uh, Kamaja Jack, um, I subscribe to PewDiePie. If not, can you? I'm not and I can't. My computer doesn't allow it, unfortunately. There's like a human need to explore button is that's deep broken and Our not working. Mathis RH, hey, did you hear that Starship got destroyed? No, I haven't heard that Starship got destroyed. No idea what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> did it really? Did Starship really fall over? Oh, that's funny. Uh, you'd be talking about Star Hopper. I haven't heard anything about that yet. Um, got destroyed. The nose cone fell over in a storm. Well, it looks like it did. If so, guys, no big deal. Yeah, I'll pull up the volume here once we're past this intro. Um, you know, that luckily that nose cone is like the easiest. That was built in like days. I think they'll be okay. Um, the big deal is when they, the avionics and all that stuff, engines and all that stuff. That is the danger of building a rocket out outside in a tent. Um, yeah, it looks like they'll be able to rebuild that in literally no time. That's There's nothing advanced about the, the nose cone itself. So um, I'll look into that today, though. I didn't realize that. Um, 
what a thing to wake up to. Marcus, Tim, people say the star hopper fell all over. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. The stream is loud? Hmm. That's funny, because this is my normal stuff. Um, hey, Tim, what's my honest opinion on New Shepard's design? I love it. I mean, 100%. When I first saw it, I was like, that is amazing. It looks like a little virus. I love when it lands with the little landing legs. Um, it's doing, ex I feel like this is a very safe and reliable system. Look at how many redundancies they have. Um, it seems very simple and safe. I would trust the system. And this is doing exactly what it's meant to do, which is get people out of suborbital. Um, here we go. Good morning, everyone. A big welcome from us at Blue Origin. We're getting ready for New Shepard's 10th mission to space, known by Team Blue as NS-10. You may re recall that we decided to scrub this mission back in December due to a, a ground support issue. But hey, we found the root cause, we've made some tweaks, and New Shepard is on the pad looking good for her 10th flight to space. As you know, Blue Origin, we take the conservative approach. We are patient. We want to build for you guys the safest and most reliable human flight system. But today, everybody, it's all about the payloads on board New Shepard. We have a capsule full of eight payloads brought to us by NASA. Now, if you're interested in knowing more details about those payloads, I encourage you to go to our website where we've got a new blog that describes all of them in detail. Okay, we're at T minus 17 minutes and 15 seconds to go until launch. I would like to start with a special hello to my team members back at our Kent, Washington headquarters, as well as our team in Cape Canaveral, Florida at our New Glenn Rocket Factory. And for those of you that are joining us on Twitch and NASA TV for the first time, we are super excited to have you guys with us. All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Ariane Cornell. It is a pleasure to be your webcast host today and your guide through this 10th New Shepard mission. It is uh, a little chilly down here live in West Texas, but that's okay. It means that we're out here on this new beautiful set. You and I together, we're gonna take in this launch, which is right over my shoulder here. The rumble of the engine, the sonic booms, uh, it's going to be coming at you live. I'm really excited to have you guys here with us as we take it in from this new set. All right, cool. we're at uh, T minus 16 minutes to go. Now, the last time we saw you, of course, was NS9. We tested the uh, solid rocket motor, which is the escape system in the crew capsule. What we did is we took the uh, rocket and the capsule up to about 290,000 feet or 88 kilometers and fired the rocket motor inside the capsule to see how it would react up in space. And let me tell you, it was a picture perfect test. We actually got some highlights from that last flight, so why don't we roll it? Mach 1. Escape. Mach 3, to point four pin. PM touchdown. Let me tell you, that was an absolutely thrilling day. Solid rocket motor performed perfectly. We've got the reaction control system in the base of the crew capsule that did a great job in stabilizing the capsule. Then, of course, it came down under that nice, soft landing of the three parachutes and the retro thrust system. And then, of course, the rocket made her landing. We are eight for eight on New Shepard landings, and we're looking for number nine today. Okay, we're at T minus 15 minutes to go until launch. Why don't we get into today's mission? Now, today's mission, again, is all about the uh, payloads that are on board New Shepard. We're going to be flying those payloads in a, uh, a nominal flight configuration. So what does that mean? It's the same flight profile that you and I are going to be flying when we, when we one day jump on board New Shepard. We're going to take the rocket and the capsule up to about 350,000 feet or 106 kilometers well over the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space. 
Those eight uh, NASA payloads are going to get a three three to four minutes of some clean micro G's before it comes down for a nice soft landing. Now, we're going to be telling you more about the payloads that are inside the capsule and what it's like to be a, a New Shepard payload customer coming up in our show. Um, but until then, we are here at uh, T minus 15 minutes to go until launch, and we are in a hold. While we've got a little bit of time, why don't we take a look at New Shepard as she gets ready for flight on the pad? Looks like we're on a hold for about 60 days almost. Hopefully that's going to reset. Um, this is, uh, guys, uh, I know it can be frustrating as us casual observers uh, to potentially be frustrated, but really, I'll, they can hold all day long. Again, scrubs are cheaper than booms. Who cares? I mean, I just want to see this thing launch well. I want them to get good data off it. I want them to be successful. Um, so it's just important to remember it doesn't... Thank you again for joining us live for the 10th mission in the New Shepard test program. We are in a brief hold. That's okay. We want to make sure that our teams are aligned, that the weather is uh, is within bounds. You know, the, the winds have been a bit gusty down here in Texas the last couple of days, and while it might look nice over my shoulder, we have to make sure that, you know, winds aloft and uh, everything is all uh, within the green. But while we have a little bit of time here, why don't we take you behind the scenes of a rocket launch? In fact, one of the most important parts of the rocket launch, one of the most important reviews that we have in anticipation of this launch is what we call the FRR or the Flight Readiness Review. Now, uh, during our last test, we uh, filmed the FRR and I want to show you some highlights from that meeting. This flight is getting us so close to putting humans in space. It's a really important flight from that point of view. And I just want to ask you guys, while you're doing all this tomorrow, to take a moment and not forget to reflect on the meaning and the beauty of what you're doing. So you'll be doing all the checklists and you'll be doing everything professionally, but also step back a little bit and think about that. We're getting very close. I'm incredibly proud of this entire team. Go get them. Let me reiterate that last point. It never gets old. I've been down here for every single one of these launches and the excitement just builds in the in the days and the hours and now the minutes leading up to flight. It is absolutely an incredible thing to be part of. All right, we are at T-minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds to go until launch. We are out of a hold. While we've got a couple of minutes, why don't we turn it over to the pad and check in on New Shepard as she warms up for launch. All right, so yeah, again, does appear we're in a, a brief hold now. It looks like they kind of had a countdown clock going again for a second, but um, we'll just find out here. No big deal. We can be nice and patient. Meanwhile, we have a couple questions to answer. Um, and real quick, back to the the my honest opinion on the new Shepard's design. Uh, to me, it seems really robust. Like when I when I look at it, I don't know. It just seems like strong and beefy. Um, I like that it has those uh, where the legs fold up. There does the, right here. There there appears to be like a runner, like a, some kind of strengthening thing that leads all the way up to those upper little canards that kind of pop out. Um, it seems like it's just well thought out. I like that it has drag brakes that pop out. That helps eliminate the need for a lot of additional propulsion. They really seem to have nailed down the propulsive landing and control and guidance on being able to propulsively land and hover and divert. I mean, it has a lot of capability. I think this is a really, really cool system. Like in my head, when I when I think about this, when I imagine this whole you know launch going off and 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 going around, it seems like the safest way to put humans in space because they're on a nice, safe, time-tested capsule. A capsule is like the safest design ever. I mean, there's almost nothing that can go wrong. It's, they're passively stable through re-entry, meaning no matter how much it tumbles or whatever, and uh, on its way, you know, say something would go wrong as it re-enters, 
as the bow shock, as the bow wave in front of the vehicle develops, uh, it'll automatically orient itself just due to aerodynamic stability. That's just how a capsule works. So even if all systems turn off, basically, um, the the vehicle will re-enter safely. Um, and also, it's not high enough re-entry speeds that I mean, it could probably re-enter upside down and be fine. But uh, you know, parachutes are a very time-tested thing. I have no doubt in the, the validity of parachutes. There's just few moving parts on the part that has right, humans thank on board. Thank you for staying with us. We are coming to you live from West Texas for New Shepard's 10th mission to space. We uh, are at T-minus 14 minutes. Our team has decided to back up the clock just a little bit. Again, this is normal. This is fine. We just want to make sure that our teams are aligned. A lot of time and preparation goes into building the rockets and to, uh, to developing the mission. So if we need to take an extra minute or two, that is quite all right with us. Again, we take the very conservative approach here at Blue. We want to do this safely for you. All right, T minus 13 minutes and 40 seconds to go. So let's go back to New Shepard, the New Shepard program. This is a really exciting time for us at Blue Origin. The rocket that you see out on the pad, well, it's now got a sibling. We have a second rocket, a second tail, as we like to call it, uh, here in Texas in a vertical pro processing facility, which we also call the barn, again, because we're down here in Texas. And we followed this rocket's trek down to Texas from our Kent, Washington headquarters just a couple of weeks ago before the new year. I want to share with you that voyage. This, everybody, is the rocket that's going to be taking people to space. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. I was just going to ask. Is this the rocket? Well, this morning we are prepping to ship the uh, New Shepard PM4 that will carry the next man rated crew capsule into space. If anybody sees anything, stop at any time. Is what you're seeing here is 110 feet of truck and trailer. Then we're a grossing weight of about 105,000 pounds. Tomorrow is a big day for us. We're a little over 450 mileage wise. We've got four more to go after today. We're here at the West Texas Launch Facility. I think a few of us may have, have we saw this uh, when they attempted to launch in December during <laughs> Scrub Sember. Um, super cool. This is the capsule that will be taking uh, people on the first rides. Let me tell you how exciting it is to be okay. saying that we are building a fleet of rockets. We're going to have rockets that are dedicated to payloads like the one over my shoulder here, as well as rockets like the one that's in the barn that is going to be flying people to space. So exciting to think that human spaceflight is just around the corner. We're aiming for the end of this year, by the end of this year. But as we have said before, we are not in a rush. We want to take our time. We want to do this right. Gradatum ferociter, step by step, ferociously. That is our motto at Blue, and that's exactly how we approach this test program. But again, it's not that far away, right? I think about when I was a little girl wanting to be an astronaut, it felt like it was somehow out of grasp, but literally I can go touch the rocket that is going to be taking people to space and fingers crossed, maybe me one day as well. All right, but today's mission, as we have said, is all about the payloads. And you might wonder, well, why are they flying payloads? Why is this so important? And it's important because we are already opening up access to space for people like you and me. It's part of our grand vision of millions of people living and working in space. And now when I think about, you know, again, when I was a, a little girl and, and wanting to be an astronaut and wanting to get into aerospace, of course, I was inspired by historic NASA missions. But I also liked watching Star Trek and Star Wars, these, these scenes where you have lots of people that are living and working in space. And while that is science fiction, what's behind me? This is science reality. This is here. This is now. So exciting to be part of Blue Origin at this point. And it's not just us as a company and the team, mem team members here. We've got customers on board. We have school children that are flying payloads for the price of you know, uniforms for a sports team. We have entrepreneurs that have their payloads on board. They're testing technology for a reasonable price over and over again. 
And now, as we've said, the vision of millions of people living and working in space, this is not the, uh, this is not the end of it with New Shepard. We, of course, have New Glenn, which is coming down the line. We aim to be flying New Glenn, or orbital rocket, in 2021. But what we've already done is taken the lessons from New Shepard and rolled them into New Glenn. That means the technology, but it also means the operations. What are we learning here from New Shepard that we can roll into New Glenn? We're taking notes with every single flight down here at Blue. Gradatum Ferocitor, step-by-step step, ferociously. The fact that these two programs are linked, not an accident. We have been thinking about this for years. And New Glenn is going to be the workhorse that is going to be taking us uh, and also uh, heavy infrastructure into space for decades to come. Absolutely exciting. All right, we're at T minus nine minutes and 27 seconds. Uh, I understand that we have gone into another hold, and while we have a little bit of time, why don't we check out New Shepard on the pad as she warms up for her fourth flight to space. All right, this gives me time to answer some more questions. So, okay, yeah, so we're kind of ending the talk about that I do, in my opinion, seem like this is a safe, uh, inexpensive way to get humans on suborbital flights. And safe and inexpensive are the two key words there. I really like it. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. All right, so Derek asks, I've also been wondering about using your music and videos. Definitely going to start showing up in my skydiving videos. That's awesome, Derek. Thank you, and uh, I'm excited to see those. And uh, Von Zeppelin, thanks for the coverage. Enjoy the rest of the content as well. Well, thank you very much, Von Zeppelin. I like making content. I'm working on – I started like two scripts in the past week, uh, and now I've changed it to a third. I just keep changing. <laughs> i got to settle down and get content out. I'm hoping to have a video out ASAP. Um, heavy cream. How can Blue Origin land? Thank you for oh. joining us live from West Texas for the 10th flight in the New Shepard test program. And as mentioned, this rocket behind me, she is warming up for her fourth flight to space. Oh, and cool when I say warming up, I mean quite literally. It is, it's quite chilly down here. We're looking at about 32 degrees or so Fahrenheit, about zero centigrade. Uh, I know I'm saying, trying to stay toasty out here with you guys. But while we've got a little bit of time, let's go back and talk some more about New Glenn, this rocket that is coming down the pike. We are going to be building New Glenn down in Florida and launching her from Florida. Not many people know this. This is the first time that people have actually launched and then built, uh, sorry, built and then launched that same rocket from Florida. So we've been down in our rocket factory in Florida for about a year now. We've got machinery going in there. We're already starting to bend some metal. It is a really exciting time as we ramp up that program. I want to show you a video of what New Glenn is going to look like when she flies in 2021. Flight, this is Northbound, Retreat 1. This is an updated, this is an updated version of that video. Um, about New Glenn. New landing legs now. They're showing off. Um, they also show the dual uh, BE4 engines on the upper stage. The old animation showed a single one. I really personally love the new design here. I like that there's like a silver band around the inner stage. It, uh, or not the inner stage, on the, the base of the fairing. There's like a nice, I think that's really sharp. I hope that stays. Uh, not to say that they stole design language, but I, it reminds me of an Apple pen <laughs> or Apple pencil which I am kind of fond of. I think it's a nice, clean, slick design. Um, you can see that it has seven BE, uh, BE4s. BE That's the big methane burning engines. And this is a good time to answer uh, Heavy Cream's How Can Blue Origin Land New Glenn on an X Freighter, which we're about to see, while meeting safety requirements. Make it autonomous? I'm, sketch I'm sketched out by it. Um, people have to be in ex outside of exclusion zones, period. There are exclusion zones in every launch Obviously, if they're landing a rocket on a barge or a ship, people have to be off of it, period. So it will have to be able to be autonomous, which compared to landing a rocket is probably a lot easier. Um, again, the, the ship stays moving. You know, speed is relative. So um, the rocket just tracks along with it. No big deal and lands like that. Uh, I wonder if the, I mean, now this is complete speculation land, but I wonder if there could be like a safety bunker or something on a ship. Or something. I don't know. I, I doubt there'll be people on it. I'm sure they'll have safety and protocols for uh, how to handle that situation, though. Um, I'm not too sketched out by it because I'm sure people are thinking about it. <laughs> Human safety is very, very important, as you all know. 
All right, let's check back in. That is going to be a beautiful rocket and also a very large rocket. You can see from some of the elements that we put in that animation just how large it's going to be. It's going to be about 100 meters tall, the fairing seven meters in diameter. We're looking at at least twice the volume capability in the fairing of anything that's on the market these days. And the reaction from the market has been wonderful. For the companies that are, that are flying large satellites, we can do dual launch capability. For those that are putting in constellations, we can put that many more small satellites in that large fairing. And then the launch capability, the, the, the mass to orbit itself is pretty massive. We're looking at 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit, 13 metric tons to GTO. This is big. How's it going to get up there? Seven BE-4 engines. Each BE-4 engine, 550,000 pounds of thrust or 3.85 million pounds of thrust on liftoff. Again, massive. That's in the first stage. That second stage, as you saw, uh, separating from the first stage, powered by two BE-3Us, or the upper stage variants of the BE-3. For those that have been watching our webcasts, you know that the BE-3 is the engine that has been powering New Shepard. Uh, and what we've done is we've uh, made some upgrades to that engine. We're putting a bigger nozzle on it, of course, for in-space capability. We're making a couple of other tweaks, and it is going. There are going to be two of those that are going to be powering that second stage as it takes the payload right to where it needs to go. And then, as you saw there, a really nice uh, separation of the payload from the second stage itself. So a lot of really exciting things coming down the pike for us. And now back to today's mission. We are at T minus nine minutes and 27 seconds to go. Our team is in a hold here. Again, just want to make sure that everything is aligned. All of our systems are aligned. All of the weather conditions uh, are within bounds. And while we've got a little bit of time, why don't we throw it back to the pad and check out New Shepard as she warms up for her flight to space this morning. All right, back to questions. All right, so, um... Yeah, again, heavy cream wouldn't be too sketched out by it. I'm sure people will be safe. And I apparently everyone thought that the, uh, the idea of a bunker on a ship is probably a bad idea. On further thought, it's probably a really bad idea to put a bunker on a ship if in case it sinks, then you're stuck in a bunker. So I'm guessing there just won't be people on board. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long, about two years. What's that box sticking off of it? I've never noticed there's a box maybe that's an amazon prime delivery box they're just gonna boop, uh land it i want i would love for a new shepherd to land in my front yard personally deliver me a, a thing and then take back off maybe someday all right so uh nick obrick channel hey tim uh i'm a your follower from russia you've got a question do i know anything about the ussr dream chaser looking shuttle yes a little bit uh if i remember right was that the boar there was actually there was actually a little dream chaser that could have flown. Uh, it had it had the foldable dihedral wings, so it was a lifting body that looks like dream chaser. Uh, it had a weird pointy nose, like a a narwhal. <laughs> Might as well just call it a flying narwhal bathtub situation. Uh, it had foldable dihedral wings. Um, they Thank also. You everybody oh. for joining us live. For New Shepard's 10th mission to space, we're coming to you from West Texas, from our West Texas launch site. And launching rockets is not the only thing that we do down here in Texas, as it turns out. This is also where we test our rocket engines. I think that one of the most critical watershed moments in the development of Blue Origin is when we decided to take liquid propulsion in-house. And since then, we have developed four, now going on a uh, five engines, if you count BE-3U, uh, that we have developed uh, in-house. And now we were just talking about the BE-3 that's on New Shepard, 110,000 pounds of thrust, uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. We are making the upgrade to make the BE-3U, the upper stage variant that's going to be powering the second stage of New Glenn. But also the engine that you might have heard quite a bit about is our BE-4 engine, the Blue Engine 4. That is our LOX LNG liquefied natural gas engine, 550,000 pounds of thrust. We've done some uh, quite a bit of testing already on that rocket engine down here. I want to show you some highlights of some of our testing so far. Hey, I... I saw a good reminder. This is a great chance to remind you guys. 
Stop the tribalism. We're better than that. We're the space flight community. It's not a this versus that, guys. Come on, we can cheer for everyone. We can cheer for everyone. You don't have to pick favorites. You can have a favorite. It doesn't mean you have to hate the other one. Like, I don't get this whole attitude of SpaceX versus Blue Origin versus NASA, ULA. They're all on our team. They're all on team. Get us off this planet. So so hold your your comments to yourself about, you know, wanting any of these companies to not do well or wanting one particular company to do better than others. Let's stop. Let's scrub that, guys. Come on. We're better than this. We are the space flight community. Space flight is a universal thing. It's all of us humans coming together to get off our planet, right? So friendly reminder. This isn't Ford versus Chevy, guys. This isn't your grandpa, your dad's uh, weird old, you know, tr tribalism here. This is space flight. Cheer for everybody. What we've also done is powered it up to about 70%. Now, the rocket engine that is down here uh, that uh, that does 70% power, we're going to be switching it out soon, and we're going to be going up to 100% power on the next uh, BE-4. So really exciting. Now, we're at T-minus 9 minutes and 14 seconds to go until launch. We are out of a hold. I'm excited and happy to report. While we've got a second here, why don't we throw it back to the pad and watch New Shepard as she gets warm for her fourth flight to space. Sweet. Yeah, so hopefully hopefully you guys agree with my sentiment. Like, I think this is, first off, if you're comparing this vehicle to any SpaceX vehicle, you're, you're wrong. You are wrong. You can't compare this vehicle to anything. Uh, you could maybe compare it to other suborbital human flight launchers like Virgin Galactic. To stay warm out here in the, on our beautiful outdoor set. Let's get back into the mission at hand today. So as mentioned, eight NASA payloads on board brought to us by the NASA Flight Opportunities Program. And while I would love to tell you what it's like to be a New Shepard payload customer, why don't we hear it from our customers themselves? customers. Flying with Blue is becoming a very streamlined process and it's becoming a very user-friendly experience. We're in this moment, which I think is really a cusp. Pretty soon it's going to be launches every 30 days, and I think that's going to be great for the field. Yeah, it looks like, you know, that's usable. For me, the guaranteed return of payload has just been critical. It's allowed me to fly prototypes in very early designs. Basically, it is extending the laboratory and testing environment up to space. It's really uh, remarkable that we can get up into space and we can do it so much cheaper, so much quicker and repeatable compared to trying to go to space station. This is the L-4 VPF load. Space is the perfect vehicle for looking at problems that can't be solved in one discipline. So as these price points come down, you start to have people like me put a payload into space and you can have creative solutions to long-standing problems. It's a revolution in how we're thinking about space travel. So hopefully we can get a lot more interesting science out. Isn't that cool? So I've been down here the last couple of days watching our payload customers get their payloads prepped to put them in the capsule. And they are so excited to see their science and technology go up to space and take advantage of those three to four minutes of really clean micro G's that only New Shepard can provide. Really exciting. All the, it, they become part of the team down here at Blue, which is so much fun because their excitement bleeds over to us and vice versa. It's just an incredible time to be down here. All right, we're at T minus six minutes and 45 seconds to go until launch. While we've got a moment, why don't we send it back to the pad as New Shepard revs up for space? Let's see here. Um, I think I'm trying to check out. Um, I know that some people are. Um, I, I believe we do have slow chat on people, if not... All right, as mentioned, it's a brisk fault. morning down here, but it is a beautiful morning to be launching rockets. Those eight NASA payloads are nice and snug in the crew capsule right now, ready for their launch to space. And while we're mentioning NASA and their payloads, we actually have a very special message from the head of NASA, Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Nice. At NASA, technology drives exploration. Testing technologies in suborbital space with the help of commercial companies is an important step to advancing them for missions at the Moon and at Mars. Today, Blue Origin will launch its New Shepard rocket carrying about 10 payloads from NASA and a small sampling of our many partners in industry and academia. 
These NASA-supported experiments will help advance in-space propulsion technologies, habitation systems, science instruments, and other capabilities crucial for exploration. Like the researchers, I'm excited to learn the results from this very important flight. NASA values the partnerships with our Flight Opportunities providers, and we really wish Blue Origin a successful launch. Darn right. I speak on behalf of the entire Blue Origin team when I say it is an absolute honor to have NASA flying with us. Obviously, NASA has done so much over the last several decades to open up space for us, and to be working with them on this next era of opening up space for everybody is an absolute pleasure. So thank you, NASA, for being with us. All right, we're at T-minus four minutes and 43 seconds to go. Today is about payloads, but our next milestone taking people into space. Now the capsule that is behind me on the pad, that capsule is gonna be dedicated to payloads, but the next capsule coming down the line from our Kent, Washington headquarters, that's gonna be taking people into space. Now let's take a look at what that capsule is ultimately gonna look like for our customers. When you walk up to that capsule, the first thing that you see, right, those gorgeous. big, gorgeous windows, those are the largest windows that have ever flown in space. Six seats, six windows. There's no fighting up in space. It's going to be a good time for everybody. Everybody's going to get that spectacular view that you see there of the, the limb of the Earth, the darkness of space. We've taken a lot of time, obviously, on the engineering that's gone into the capsule, but also the interior design. We want to celebrate the engineering and celebrate those windows. You see there the seats, those are in-house designed and tested seats, as well as in the middle there, you see that is our solid rocket motor, the escape motor mm -hmm. that we tested during our last flight. It is a roomy capsule, let me tell you, that is uh, not exactly like what our friend Alan Shepard had on his flight to space. Uh, it's going to be made for you, these capsules. It's made for the human space flight experience. All right, we're at T-minus three minutes and 15 seconds to go. I am so excited for this launch. We are revving up down here. And talking about revving up, why don't we turn it over to Pat Audio and listen in as New Shepard revs up for space. All right, good time to grab a few more questions. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so yeah, the USSR Dream Chaser looking shuttle. Sorry, Nick. Um, I need to remind, I think there was a bore program. There's a few other things. I need to look uh, into that more. Maybe that will be a good one for canceled series, the series that's not canceled, hopefully. Um, I'll look into that. Thank you, Derek. And also, Nick, no, really, I saw it in the cosmos. Yes, I know, I know what you're talking about. Again, I think it's a narwhal bathtub with dihedral folding wings. We'll just call it that for now. Matt, when are you going to be putting those everyday astronaut baby rockets up for sale? You should sign them. I, that's what I think I'm going to do because I don't right, often... Thank you again for joining Ugh. us live. <laughs> Shepard's talk tenth later. mission to space. We're at T-minus two minutes to go until launch. You can feel the excitement down here. At this point, this is when we throw the show over to the rocket. She is completely autonomous from this moment through flight. And as a reminder, we're, fl we're flying a nominal flight profile today. The rocket and the capsule, they're gonna go up to 75 kilometers, 250,000 feet. The capsule separates, continues its flight up towards Apogee over the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space. The capsule will come down under three parachutes and that nice air cushion of the retro thrust system. And then we are looking for our ninth landing in a row from the booster at only 1,200 feet above ground, excuse me, 1,200 meters or 3,600 feet above ground level, the BE-3 engine is gonna relight for a nice soft landing. All That's right, at this rated. point, the rocket is going to be going through its built-in tests. We're gonna see, there you go, the aft fins moving, making sure it has free range of motion. Out. Shortly here, we're going to see the BE-3 engine gimbal. Maybe. And while the rocket is doing this yep. all on her own, our engineers in the Mission Control Center have their eyes on the screens. We, again, want to make sure that the propellants are properly pressurized as well as in the temperature bounds. 
a lot easier to do during a cold morning like this in January. All right, we're at T minus 30 seconds to go. It is game time, New Shepherd. Godspeed. All right, my heart rate's up. How are you guys doing up? Doing up there. <laughs> oh. I can't wait. I still don't know what that little box is over. T minus 10. All right. Nine. Eight. They're going for it. Seven. Six. Five. Good luck, four. Blue. Command engine start. Two. One. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting nervous at this time. All right. These are, these are quick missions. These are just straight up, straight back down, basically. Um, only uh, a couple, or like a several, like six or seven or eight minutes or so um, from beginning of mission to end of mission, so. There it is, New Shepard has cleared the tower on her way to space for the 10th time. You can follow along as she gains speed on her way to space in the top right corner of your screen. The altimeter on the bottom left corner of your screen, approaching max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. Max Q happens so quickly. Max Q confirmed she continues to punch her way to space. A beautiful burn on that BE-3 engine. 10,000 meters. Right. Again, remember, these are going to be I'm quick. I'm telling you, that gets me every single time. The rumble as it was clearing the tower was something to be felt down here, let me tell you. All right. We are continuing our climb to space. Our next highlight is going higher. to be main engine cutoff. But at this point, our new Shepard payloads are inside the capsule. They're starting to feel those Gs are going to come on gradually. We're going to max at about three Gs on ascent. And then maybe counterintuitive to some, the, uh, the max Gs that the payloads are going to feel are about five just momentarily as the capsule comes in uh, that back into the atmosphere. We're now at like 3,500 meters per second or kilometers per hour. And we're going to see... Nico must have happened already. The speed. There we go. The telemetry. Is All right. Main video. engine cutoff is confirmed. While the speed is declining, you'll notice, of course, that the rocket and the, and the capsule are continuing its ascent to space. We're coming up shortly on separation. That is when the capsule is going to separate from the booster. There it is. Separation is confirmed. At this point, see it there. if you were an astronaut on board, this is when you're going to start to feel that weightlessness. We're going to let you unbuckle. I know I'd be doing my somersaults in there before taking in those spectacular views out of the world's largest windows that have ever been to space. 300,000 feet. There you see the two distinct craft in your screen. Those payloads wow. now are getting their nice, clean micro Gs. And actually, they would experience um, zero G or microgravity as soon as main engine cut off. That's when you're coasting up. So as soon as you're not accelerating, that's the feeling of weightlessness is no acceleration. Um, no change, uh, apparent change of velocity, because really you are slowing down relative to Earth, but you are not being pushed by anything. So. Um, now you'll see the speed is going to null out and start speeding back up as it falls back down. That's what happens when it reaches apogee. Um, apogee meaning highest point in its trajectory. We have crossed the 350,000 foot mark, which is what oh. we were aiming for. Wow, almost right on the nose. Wow. 350,000, 775 feet, thousand feet. That is absolutely incredible. That is exactly what we were targeting. Now, of course, this is the unofficial 
altitude or of our apogee. We will be confirming all of these statistics after the flight. So the booster is going to beat the capsule back down, at least for the first part of flight, uh, because it's more aerodynamic. You know, it's it's skinnier, it's more dense. Uh, the capsule now has a big broadside uh, that catches a lot of uh, All right, both resistance. craft are heading back home. You can see the booster is gaining speed. The booster is actually going to beat the capsule back to her landing pad, which is just two miles north of where it's taken off from. You see the booster on the right, the capsule on the left. The capsule is about to hit atmospheric pierce point. That's when it comes back in through the atmosphere. At that point, it's going to have some good air pressure to be able to push against for those control systems to, to work with. Now we've got the wedge fins that have deployed. So those are the fins at the top of the rocket that are housed in the ring fin. They keep the rocket stable. They work with the ring fin itself, which centralizes the air pressure that flows through the ring fin. That's awesome. Keeps it nice and upright, just aerodynamically. Someone asked me about the Of course, the it works in concert with the aft fins, which you saw going through their bit checks right before flight. To me, that's a brilliant thing that ring fin is gorgeous and really cool keeps the aerodynamic stability um, keeps the center of pressure center of lift way behind the center of mass and also acts thank as, you like, their again interstage. everybody for joining us live for this 10th mission of the new shepherd test program oh. everything looking nominal in flight so far we See, hit an apogee of 350,000 feet so far, another beautiful flight for New Shepard and the team. Once those drag brakes come out, it'll slow down like crazy. Get ready. They'll probably pop those here any second. You'll see the drag brakes deploy on that ring at the top. Next year, we're looking for the drag brakes to deploy. Right there. there we go. Drag brakes deployed. That oh. is cutting the speed. Yes, it is. Now get ready. The booster's going to relight at the very last second. It's unbelievable how late they can wait. I can see New Shepard right over my shoulder. She is coming in. Boom! Oh, this shot. There we go, son. This and shot the motor just close. came in nicely. <laughs> Look at that cover of the BE3 engine. Absolutely spectacular. Dang. See? I told you guys. And touchdown. I told you Welcome guys. home, New Shepard. Wow, absolutely spectacular flight. That is the fourth mission to space and back for that rocket. That, everybody, is a reusable rocket. That is. I concur. Absolutely Meanwhile, beautiful. Cast. Incredible. All right, the show is not over. We're going to wait for the crew capsule to come home. No crew in it today. We've got eight NASA payloads that have just had three to four minutes of some really clean micro G's. There's the chutes. But if you were an astronaut, can you imagine the views out of those windows after getting your own time to float yeah, in them. space? There they're go good. the drogues. Those are the guide parachutes. We're now waiting for the mains. A little bit of coning. That's all right. Those mains should there take care of that. Nah, Reefing of this. the parachutes. Now waiting for full inflation. There we go. See, to me, these are, this is safe. This is simple, Absolutely reliable. beautiful. A nice steady descent, 15, 16 miles an hour. This doesn't scare me. Uh, like riding on a space shuttle, that would have scared the crap We're out of me. We're about 1,500 feet above ground level. We, of course, are at 3,700 feet here at our West Texas launch site above mean sea level. Oh, about mean sea. Okay, so it's going to touch down here in like 1,300 feet. 
capsule coming back into our valley here in West Texas. Picture perfect flight so far. Wow, what a day. Last seconds, retro thrust system is gonna fire. Just in the last milliseconds, that is, it's gonna kick up the dust down here, but it provides a nice air cushion for all of those payloads on board today. Um, th they can land with two shoots. They've done a, a two shoot landing, probably like NS10, NS5 or so. Um, the, the fifth flight, they did two shoots, maybe it was like the sixth or seventh. Um, they've tested this thing to death. There we and go. And touchdown. So you see the retro, that big plume Welcome of Welcome home, dust. New Shepard. It's from the Incredible retro day. Kudos to the whole team. Kudos to our customers that are down here. A big thank you to NASA for being part of this mission. Absolutely beautiful. Well done to everybody involved today. Okay, so I've already seen our recovery team has already started to head out towards both vehicles. They're gonna be going through all the, the safing operations and we're gonna be getting those customers out to the capsule shortly here so they can go check out their, uh, their payloads and start crunching all that wonderful data that they've gotten from their flight to space and back today. Sweet. What a view. That would be great. All right, let's go through some unofficial statistics here. Mission launch time, 9.05 a.m. Central Standard Time. Maximum ascent velocity, 2,226 miles per hour, or about 3,600 kilometers per hour. Crew Thank capsule you. apogee, 350,775 feet, or about 107 kilometers. Mission elapsed time, 10 minutes and 15 seconds of launch excitement. That was just an incredible day. And I can tell you, being outside, listening to the booms, watching that engine relight, I, oh my God, what a day. Okay, I wanna thank again our friends at NASA for, uh, for joining us today. Just a wonderful day to launch rockets. I want to encourage you all to go to our website if you'd like to fly with us. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna go check out the crew capsule right now. I want you guys to join me on Instagram. And until our next exciting launch, my name is Ariane Cornell and Gradatum Ferocitor. Nice. That was a good webcast, guys. I, good job, Blue Origin. Thank you for bringing us along for that brief ride, but very successful. Again, uh, another friendly reminder, guys, this isn't an, uh, this company versus that. This isn't Ford versus Chevy. This isn't SpaceX versus Blue Origin per se. Um, it, it, it might be, but we don't have to think of it like that. We don't have to pick one or the other. So um, let's go. We have so many more questions to answer here. Sorry, guys. Um, so Matt Davis, yes, I'll be putting these. These are going to be called the Tim got ripped off from Alibaba, China, little dumb rockets that are probably toxic and you shouldn't own them. Slash, they will be signature holders because I don't often get, um, I don't, I'm sure you guys can hear that. Looks like snow removal is <laughs> going to be happening inside my house, I think, judging by the sound. Well, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, anyway, I don't have often merchandise in my hands. So this, since I do have it, I will sign all these. They'll be called signature holders. Um, that's, I guess, the best I can do so I can offload a handful of absolutely terrible. Don't buy these. They're wiggly and they can't even stand up on their own without the little thing. Don't buy them, but I will sign them if you want to for some reason. Um, all right, so <laughs> let's keep going. Um, I, and I'll, I'll do that this week. I'll get those signed and I'll ship them out to the, uh, my distribution this week. So, um, maybe they'll be in store by February. Maybe I'll include them with like a package or something. I don't know. Jacob. Thanks, Tim. Love your work. Thank you, Jacob. Um, Jum, thank you for your great content. Can you remind your audience that it's not a race against SpaceX? Uh, the hate in the comments is cringy and sad. I 100% agree. That is, thank you for re reminding me to remind people. I did see that comment pop up. Um, hence why I... Hopefully remind people 
about the the we want to start guys we we want to be the people the 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 community that's supportive of everyone why there's already enough division in every single thing in life in sports in you know in politics in everything there's division why can't we be the one community that's that's actually positive and uniting why don't make it that guys join with me and be positive and uniting and excited for everything cheering for everyone's attempts even if you think it's silly even if you think no one arrow spike sst will never work still cheer for them and hope the best for them don't say that's dumb your payload to mass ratio is way less than this company and you're gonna be 14 dollars per kilogram more no let's just let's be excited let's be happy that people are working their butts off to try and do something new and different period let's let's cheer and celebrate them for that so um jeffrey trip it's funny how she buy has to buy time well she does have to buy time with they, they're way more fluid with their launch they're not rendezvousing with anything they don't have um super chilled propellants that need to like take off the second they're loaded like spacex they have a lot more f uh, fluidity in their in their launch sequence so they have holds uh, they might have a lot of holds no big deal it makes for potentially a boring webcast sometimes but i'd much rather them hold if they don't think something's perfect and if i'm on board that capsule and they're like no we're just gonna push through go ahead there's people watching on the internet we got to make sure this goes right now i'd be like no 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 make sure the rocket's okay before you turn it on I, I, that's more important to me than making sure the people watching a webcast are happy. Like, that's a good practice to have before you start putting humans on board. Patience and uh, is the key to making sure this stuff goes well. Um, Zachary, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read that. Uh, Craig, where are we? Wow. Uh, Craig, amen. Regarding the picking of sides, there's enough in our life to pick a tribe on. We don't need that here. Amen, Craig. You get a fist slamming down on the desk. Amen. If I'm going to pick sides, it's going to be on the side of unity. Does that make sense? That is so loud. You guys are probably just hearing only that. That's what happens when you get buried in 0.3 meters of snow. Um, then Gallen Gamer, love you, Tim. No tribalism here. Just wondering if Jeff Bezos treats his Blue Origin employees like he does his Amazon employees. That's a different topic. So, um... That's getting close to workers' rights and politics. I'm sure, in, at least in the engineering world, in the aerospace engineering world, if, if the workers feel like they aren't being compensated fairly, it's a competitive marketplace. They're free to go elsewhere. I'm guessing the people that I know that work at Blue Origin seem to love their job. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that, and I hope they continue their hard work uh, because I want to see New Shepard have people on it. I want to see New Glenn fly. Um, that's what matters to me the most, period. Um, this, you know, honestly, when it comes down to it, the same could be said for, for Tesla and SpaceX that they've had a lot of potentially, you know, worker complaints about being overworked and things like that too. So, um, the only company I, you know, like there's a, there's other aerospace companies that don't work 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week, you know, and, and they're more relaxed. They're not pushing as hard as these other companies are, uh, blue origin, although they're slow and steady. I'm sure the people are working pretty hard to make sure their programs are done, but I don't think anyone's out there working as ferociously, I guess, would probably be the wrong word because that's part of uh, Blue Origin's mantra. But SpaceX clearly is working around the clock and to the point where they, they do have a high turnover rate and a lot of potentially fatigue because their employees are working long, long, long hours. If you're passionate about something and you love what you do, that's the best situation for you. Like you love that. You want to go into work. You want to get your problem solved. You want to keep going day in and day out and day in and day out. Um, so it's, it's a personal, it can be a personal choice at that point. No one's being forced to work that long. You can always move on. If it's not for you, move on. If you want to work hard, if this is what you're passionate about, do it. So there we go. Um, Pierre, do you know who is cheapest, uh, SpaceX or Blue Origin? Pierre, at this point, you can't. Com there's literally not one payload you can compare between the two companies, um, at least on on the metrics right now. The New Shepard is doing an entirely different type of thing than anything SpaceX is doing right now. SpaceX has never done suborbital flights besides their Grasshopper, F9R, and now their Starhopper program. Um, they don't do suborbital flights. SpaceX only delivers things into orbit. Um, 
And right now we don't have any pricing for New Glenn for orbital flights. We don't have any pricing for New Shepard for suborbital flights. There is literally zero convergence between the two programs and two companies at this current moment that we are publicly aware of. So we don't have a price. Um, right now, clearly Blue Origin would actually be the, the cheapest if you're talking about cheapest, period. Not where it's going, what it's doing. Because I'm guaranteeing, I bet you a ride, uh, the launch of, of a New Shepard is probably only in the million to two, three, four million dollar range tops for that suborbital flight, as opposed to, you know, 50 million for a Falcon 9. It's cheaper, factually, but does that mean that it's doing work or whatever? So yeah, I mean, if the question is just who's cheapest, right now Blue Origin. That's kind of like saying what's cheaper, a bottle rocket or a, you know, a 747. I mean, you can't compare the two things. They, they are not comparable. They're not meant to be compared on that metric. I hope that. Um, uh, Elias Wagner. Thanks, Tim. Love your work. Bet on an explosion zero, especially now that we're in hindsight. Uh, I, I do not expect an explosion from any any space company, guys. I don't know why people think, like, it's going to go boom. They wouldn't launch if, like, <laughs> there's hundreds of checkouts. Yes, occasionally something goes by that no one has ever experienced before. Some weird anomaly like the COPV failure on Amos 6 for, for SpaceX. Occasionally there's weird anomalies. But overall, guys, A, we don't want them to go boom. B, we don't expect them to go boom. There's a lot of people, a lot of telemetry, a lot of data helping to make sure it doesn't do that. So even asking that question is sort of like saying, who do you think is going to die in this uh, football game? Sorry for using a sports analogy. I'm just trying to think of, like, no one's going to die. Like, yes, there's a tiny chance someone literally might die, but that, that's not what you're watching. Like, that's not the point. That's not – someone could die on The Tonight Show. You know what I mean? On, like, late night TV, you could have someone keel over and die. That's not why you watch it. You know, that point oh 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 one percent chance that someone will have a heart attack live on TV. That's not why you're watching TV. Same thing to be said for space flight. That's not – Part of the equation uh, to me. Um, no cash today. Thanks for being so positive. Well, thank you. No cash today. Um, Paul. Paul. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Real everyday astronaut fan chat in the Discord channel. It's true. Uh, join us becoming a Patreon now. Well, thank you, Paul, for for plugging it for me. So I don't even have to. Yes, we do have an exclusive Discord channel. Um, it's a really high end community. I'm very proud of it. We have a, around 500 people in our Discord community. Um, which is amazing because that means that uh, we have people that are dedicated to actually uh, providing good, valuable <laughs> communication in a community. If it's totally open, I've been in open Discord channels. It's a nightmare. Ours is not that. Ours is curated. Ours is uh, a professional, fun, very thought-provoking, a great community. I'm so proud of it. They help me script and research. I love it because I'll be sitting there writing something. And I'll throw challenges out to my Discord community. Hey, who can find this? And um, it can be fun. No one has to do that. But people, you know, sometimes you're just sitting around and you would love nothing better to do than figure out what that USSR uh, bathtub slash narwhal with dihedral wings thing is. Um, yeah, that's uh, – I'm really proud of our Discord community. Um, if you want to join, patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Um Let's see. V. Hennessy government funded to make it look like private sector so that the masses don't know they're wasting our tax dollars. Um, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. That wasn't government funded. This is entirely private funded. Entirely privately funded. You're, you're barking up the wrong tree if you're yelling at Blue Origin for government funding. There's so little government funding, especially in this. Yes, NASA was the customer. NASA has the right to buy flights from people. Um, and yes, the Air Force has some investment now in the new Glenn system. Other than that, uh, I know that Blue Origin won a contract for about $100 million back in the day, or maybe it was like 1.3. I don't remember. I might be off by two orders of magnitude. Um, somewhere between zero and a trillion. I don't know. Uh, they've won some contracts for work. That's, we're not going there. Jack, yep, not going there either. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, Benito, actually still, etc. You're right. You're right. At Miko, the vehicle is still accelerating. It's still getting receiving 1G of acceleration. Earth is still pulling down on it, but you, you're synced with the capsule. So you're moving exactly with the capsule. You're both accelerating at the exact same rate. Um, you're not experiencing any differential there. Um, 
and therefore you're experiencing what would be considered microgravity. Uh, thank you, uh, Benito, for that kind reminder. Uh, my my you two thirty three go blue origin, agreed. Heavy cream. Um, how would you like to go to space if when you have a chance? Blue Virgin SpaceX trip to the ISS. At this exact moment, if I could choose between even like a Crew Dragon capsule, uh, Boeing CST one hundred Starliner, uh, Virgin Galactic Blue Origin, being perfectly honest, I would actually choose New Shepard, just because to me it seems like it's so far flown ten times now very successfully. I just have a lot of confidence. There's, it's not risky to me at all. It's well beyond the, the very developmental drawing board. Dragon Capsule hasn't flown with people on it yet. Starliner hasn't flown with people on it. Virgin Galactic still, in my opinion, very much in a developmental phase. And there's little contingencies on, on Virgin Galactic um, that kind of, in my opinion, are less, there's less redundancies than there are on something like the New Shepard. Um, so I knew if I were to right now I have to say Tim in six months you're going to space pick your ride It would honestly be new Shepard just because it'd be a nice easy simple not scary not terrifying fun uh, Safe ride and to me like I'm gonna be Let's see soon. I'm gonna be 34 years old too young to risk it <laughs> um, After you know after dragon and stuff fly a couple times in Starliner I'm sure I'll have all the confidence in the world in that program, too but this just seems nice and simple and not terrifying to me. So I would actually choose New Shepard uh, at this exact moment. Uh, Mars Mountain, 10,000 Patreon goal getting closer. Oh, God, we are creeping up on that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, once I reached 10,000 patrons, I did say I'd go to space. It was totally a joke at the time because I thought there's no way we'd ever get anywhere near 10,000 patrons. And we're over a tenth of the way there now. <sighs> Looks like I might have to swallow my fear and hop up on a new shepherd or something. <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> Ross Tower, Blue Origin for the win. Absolutely, that was a beautiful flight, and thanks, Ross. Um, Tekken Trains 101, have you heard about Starhopper blowing over in the wind last night? Yes, I heard this morning when we started up the, st the stream. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see. I'll have to read more about that. I'm I think it's just the nose cone. Don't forget the nose cone is like literally pretty flimsy metal. It's, it's like an egg. An egg will crack if you squeeze it by the, the sides. Uh, but vertical loads on an egg are very strong. Same with the nose cone. A nose cone isn't meant to handle any lateral loads. So if it tips over, it crumbles. It's not meant to tip over. It's meant to stay on top of a vehicle. Uh, but again, remember, this is just a hopper. Just a demonstrator. No big deal, guys. This isn't some... Literally, I was probably like... Ten thousand dollars worth of scrap metal, basically. Like it's it's a payload simulator slash aerodynamic simulator slash simple simple test bed for now. So don't get too attached to the Star Hopper. It probably if it blows up, there's a reason it was built by a water tower company. It's cheap, simple. All they're going to be doing is working on throttling and gimbling and and maneuvering slow speed maneuvers with their Raptor engines, which they need to do. So, yep, no no worries there. No big deal. Cody Funk, how much do you think it'll eventually cost for the average person to go to space using this concept? This particular concept will probably still be, I have no idea, somewhere, I, I'm guessing it will never go below like $50,000. Um, total guess, 100% guess out of left field, because you still have a lot of like pyrotechnics. Um, think about like the cost of actually launching. There's a lot of personnel out there. There's a lot of licensing for like the FAA, all that stuff. You have fuel costs, you have... You have like pyrotechnics in, you know, for the landing, uh, for the deploying of parachutes. You have range, you have safety officers, you have a team of probably 20, 30 people on the clock. I mean, there's, it's not cheap. It's it's never going to be a thousand dollars for a vehicle like this and, and a system like this. It's just not, um, I don't think I want it to be a thousand dollars anytime too soon. That sounds terrifying. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure because uh, I honestly just don't have any data on that. I don't know how cheap they can get. But just imagine how many people times the amount of money they're being paid by the hour plus fuel costs, plus refurbishment costs, plus engineering time, pre-load, pre-preparing, pre-checkouts, FAA license, range, and all that stuff. It's going to add up no matter what. I mean, it's never going to be cheap ever at this point. Um, but maybe someday a vehicle like this, I mean – an airplane has a lot of the, that same systems, but it's um, the cost gets deferred out a lot when you have thousands and thousands and thousands of flights per day 
um, as opposed to a vehicle that flies once a month. There's just going to be a lot of inherent costs, a lot of overhead for a vehicle like this. Um, and that's true of any low flying vehicle. Um, Randy, excited that Rocket Lab announced a DARPA as their next launch. I know, I'm actually quite surprised that their next customer is a DARPA. They go from testing to still testing to their first set of paying customers to NASA to DARPA. Rocket Lab's already uh, launching for DARPA. That's crazy. Very cool, Rocket Lab. Um, Gavin, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Gui, Guiam, Hubert. Uh, Guillermo. Hey Tim, what do you think about the about BPS space? Could you make a video with Joe? I've done a video with Joe actually. Joe and I. Joe was on my. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but about a year ago, I shot a a show for Facebook Watch. Um, it, Facebook Watch. Facebook it, Watch is like their original programming, like YouTube Red, Netflix original series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I sold a show actually to Facebook Watch. Um, it was called Spacing Out with Everyday Astronauts. It was five episodes. Um, it was a lot more produced content, like way more than this, like. Way more than anything I do on my own is like a whole team and a whole crew is shot by Jupiter Entertainment. Like all these big production, silly things. Joe was in that show. Uh, we've met a handful of times since then. Joe is awesome. We talk often on the phone. He's a great guy. Um, big fan of his work. Big, big, big fan of Joe. If you're not following BPS Space, he's making model rockets. Like literally model rockets that you, you, you know, solid rocket motors. He's launching them up and then he's trying to propulsively land them using a solid rocket booster and like making his own flight systems, his own gimbals. It's unbelievable. I feel like I should almost just pull that up right now. Um, BPS space. I'm just going to pull this up and show you guys real quick because I feel like he deserves more followers. He, and I love that he's giving us like, um, he's giving us a lot of behind the scenes. Look at this stuff. Um, here, I'm going to just pull this up. I hope you don't mind Joe. Um, look at this. He built a Falcon heavy, that has to have gimbals to control roll and everything on the sides. The two side boosters have their own flight systems that need to work in unison. They need to talk to each other to provide roll and pitch. Look at this. Who does this? He's just like a, a guy doing this stuff. Then, by the way, this thing is not small. This thing is over, like, it's a full meter tall or maybe even taller. It's huge. And eventually, he's working on trying to land and recover all these stages propulsively, which <laughs> boop, which is unbelievable, absolutely crazy. So this is BPS space. If you guys aren't um, aware, definitely, I love it because he'll he'll teach you all the things that went wrong, went right, um, and take you along for the ride. Eventually, he he sells some of these kits. He sells some of the, like parts that you can look at how big that is. So that's Joe. Um, Yes, uh, he knows that he, people think he looks like Elon. You don't have to remind him on his channel. Um, no point in doing that. So there you go. That's Joe Barnard, and that's BPS Space. Definitely follow that channel. Very, 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 very cool. Thank you, Joe, for the endless entertainment and knowledge. I'm learning a ton from his stuff. Okay, um, what else do we have here? Uh, uh, do an ISRO video. It says... Uh, Prom, promed rain. I will. Uh, ISRO is very much on my radar. Um, yes, I, I, they're on my list. I wish you guys could see my list and see how it's literally ever growing because all of a sudden some big news thing will pop out. And I have to spend four days all of a sudden redirecting all my energy towards that. And it just, it's never ending, but yes, ISRO is very much up there. Um, let's see. Uh, I said, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, Massa HD, congrats to flight. I want to see from space next time. Yes, uh, they normally show, they might not have the downrange telemetry to, to do live streams from their capsule. That is a whole, I'm finding out that's a whole world. That's like a whole thing. Um, yeah, I will hopefully see some shots and, uh, especially I would love if someone's able to live stream that someday if they had, you know, like selfie cam, that'd be awesome. Uh, be kind, please. Will new Glenn have a minimum thrust to weight ratio of less than one so it can hover two? P.S. Labor videos. Thank you. Uh, be kind, please. Great question. I think the B4 will have a very deep throttle. Uh, very deep throttle ability. We will see. Um, it is good, actually, that because it has, um, it's a closed cycle, there is actually separate entire systems for the oxygen and, uh, and the fuel so they can actually 
throttled down deeper than they could say like a rat or a Merlin engine can't throttle very much because they, they share a common turbine. They share a common uh, shaft. I just learned this from a friend named Austin. Thank you, Austin. Um, and so therefore you can't, so your, your ratio start to get off if they're sharing a common turbine. So having two separate pumps for, for their fuel and oxidizer uh, means that they can throttle it pretty darn deep. And hopefully that means they can, they can get that if they need to get that thrust to weight ratio um, less than uh, one to one, meaning it can hover, it can translate over. I think they will. I think it will. That's just my guess though. Great question. Um, Petru, uh, Elon just tweeted about BFR. I will check that out here in a second. Let's, I'll pull that up here while we got the, uh, um, let me take a little look. I don't, what? Oh, it's making me sign in. Terp de derp. Uh, putting a code in. This is dangerous. All right, so, oh, there's lots of, <whistles> lots of new info. Good, because I'm literally scripting this right now. <laughs> He's talking about 310S stainless steel is better for high temp outer skin as it can take 1450 Kelvin. So active cooling with Crow only has to mitigate 300 degrees of, of delta temperature. What's this in reply to? Okay. Okay. So he's doing 310S stainless probably on the outer skin, but then the maybe that the, the initial shell will be 301. More data. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, uh, Starship had an accident last night uh, and fairing was blown over. We'll take a few weeks to repair. Yep, no big deal. Look at all this stuff. 1750K is peak heating expected on about 20% of Starship for Leo entry. 16K on on 20% more rest drops below 1450. So no heat shield needed. That's crazy. Uh, radiative cooling at T. I have to learn what all this stuff means guys. T something for, I don't know anything about this takes care of 60% of the ship. Another reason for steel. I don't know what most of that means. And I love that. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Facts and things with numbers. And then I have to learn physics and metal metallurgy and chemistry i just get to do it yay on <laughs> yay tim you gotta basically go to college for every single script you write uh, yeah there you go um and uh let's see where are we uh you should visit seattle lots of space stuff blue origins can facility spacex's office museum flight would make a cool video you're right spencer uh thanks for saying hi spencer you're right. Uh, I do need to visit Seattle. We've got a, I've got a lot of good friends out there. Um, and I, I have an invitation to, I definitely need to go visit blue origins facilities, both out in Washington. And I really want to see the one in Florida. That one is huge and really cool. Um, yeah. Thanks Spencer. And thanks for uh, all the hard work. Spencer makes these grid finale coasters. I'm sure you're aware. We actually got these back in stock. Finally. Uh, Spencer's been working his butt off, had to buy a second machine to keep up with our demand. If you don't know what we're talking about, I do obviously sell. These have been the most ridiculous things in the world. They're not a coaster. Don't buy them if you think they're a coaster. They're not coasters. They're maybe heat pads. Actually, I use them as coasters 24-7. What am I talking about? They keep your drinks slightly elevated. They're drink elevators, people. They're drink elevators. These are finally back in stock. Thank you, Spencer, for making that happen. Boom. Heavy cream. What happens if we accidentally crowdfunded a vomit comment flight for you asking for a friend? Uh, I would do a vomit comment, but I'd rather save up and go for the big, big old kahuna. Uh, I would love, uh, I, I would fly a new shepherd, but vomit comment at this point, I don't know what I would do on it. That'd be worth Like, I don't think it'd honestly be on not to be like mean. We could spend the money better for way cooler, like educational things than me riding on a, like two 30 second hops of slight, you know, yeah, microgravity. I, let's not worry about that. Yet. I just, and I don't even know, like, what would I do a video about? Like, look at me. I'm kind of a little bit weightless ish for 30 seconds. I, let's hold off on that. It, if, if there's a company that wants to give me a free ride or something, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to make it scientifically valid. But otherwise, it's just, there's a hundred videos already of people 
doing zero G and all that stuff. So I don't know what I would offer scientifically and, and educationally that would actually be worth my, you know, probably a week uh, to go make all that happen. So yeah. So thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, Govin says ISO is having a launch in less than 24 hours. I, I need to get on the ISRO. I need to get on the ESA. I need to do, uh, or ESRO, ESA, uh, all of the other companies, all the other organizations launching. I need, I need to really be paying more attention and be able to live stream them all. But the reason that I'm currently doing just ULA, SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, I think that's all I'm covering so far is I'm just covering, if you notice, those are all companies that I've done videos about and I have a deep enough knowledge to be able to like casually talk about them. If I were to pop up a, an, an ISRO or an, e, an ESA stream right now, I would probably say a lot of wrong things and I don't want to spread misinformation. I don't want to be factually totally inaccurate. I, I'm going to make mistakes, but I would make a ton of mistakes if I were just to randomly pop up uh, and start talking willy nilly about that stuff. So someday when I do an ISRO video, I'll probably feel comfortable enough to start to know their program enough to know some of their things and all that stuff and, and start streaming them. But in the meantime, until I have, because that stuff takes a long time to be able to develop uh, a healthy enough baseline to just be able to kind of casually talk about things. Wesley, you need to campaign to get on the dear moon flight with your ability to communicate and photography skills. You'd be amazing on that flight. Wesley, oh, that scares the crap out of me. Dear moon is like, that one, like, that's significant. That's like Apollo 8 style. I mean, the people, a, a new vehicle going out to the moon actually literally terrifies me. I don't even know if I would accept. Um, depends. And I, besides that, I think I'm spread too thin. I think, like, there's way better photographers. There's way better musicians. There's way better science communicators. There's way better vloggers. Like, I... I do some of those things. I, I do all of those things a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's way better people out there to be on the Dear Moon, Dear Moon mission than me by a vast, like, huge, huge majority. Um, unless they're looking for, like, if they want the jester, the person that's like, hey, let me do flips for you for a minute before I puke because I, I'm probably going to get very seasick wouldn't be the right word <laughs> space sick uh i could probably do that be their jester but i i do not i do i do not belong on that flight there's way more talented people way more uh people that devote their lives to to their art their craft um not me but i, I would love to talk to uh mr Miyazawa. Uh, Miyazawa. Uh, I just, I think it's beautiful. What he's doing is like, literally when I think about it, tears will come to my eyes. I would love to have a conversation with him. I don't think I want to go on a flight around the moon with him. Cause it's just, uh, yeah. Con, holy dang con. Thank you so much. Holy cow. Uh, everyone thank con for me with me. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Con. Uh, love what you're doing and want to kick this your way so you can keep so that you can keep up the amazing content all about the King of Eve. Dang, the King of Eve. That's as big of a compliment as anything. Thank you so, 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 so much for your insanely generous support. That That's amazing. That really sincerely means a ton. Um, I can't tell you, guys, two years ago, literally two years ago today, I was pooping my pants because I had quit my job. I had totally stopped booking upcoming gigs as a photographer and that's scary because you do that like a year out like you make a decision for a year out as a photographer especially as an event photographer like you have your whole next year planned out so when i stopped taking gigs to do everyday astronaut everyone thought i was insane like everyone i had very few people that even had a glimpse of of any like just they were like why what do you what how what what do you mean you're gonna be a professional genuine fake astronaut and i'm like yep Sure am. <laughs> I didn't even know that I was going to be going down the educational route at first because it was still an art project at the time. When I made that decision in 2016, Everyday Astronaut was purely an art project. It was purely a photography art project, an outreach, kind of, it was space enthusiasm. There was a little bit of educational element to it, but it was purely a passion project. Um, and it was an outlet for me to express my love of space, to help make people hopefully laugh and think about space a little more. That's what Everyday Astronaut was. It was nothing like this at all. 
So uh, when when all of a sudden people started, you know, being supportive, being positive, look how much that helps. And remember that whole like we don't need to divide thing. We need to unite. It's people like you, literally like you, that encouraged me to keep going. Uh, my Discord community, my my patrons, same thing. Literally the reason that I that I've maintained this and, and been able to not only maintain but go full steam ahead, push harder and harder than ever before, produce more and more content than ever before, buy nice equipment to make my the, the webcast better and better and better every single day is because of you. And I mean that in all sincerity. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm still just like speechless when I actually, if I stop and think about it, it's unbelievable. So thank you so much, Khan. Whew. Mars Mountain. Elon, water tower company will fix Hopper with duct tape. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, thank you, Mars. Uh, Randy, I also do Rocket Lab. I do Rocket Lab. You're right. That's another video, a company that I've done a video very in depth on. I, I'm very familiar with their systems. Uh, I I know that company pretty much inside and out now. Literally inside and out because I've been inside of the company's headquarters in, in both places in, in the U.S. and in New Zealand. I know that company very well. Yes, I can speak very easily and confidently about Rocket Lab. Um, so, yeah. And Wesley, yeah, but you do you in the spacesuit with the Earthrise. That would be pretty cool. That would be that would be pretty nice. <sighs> but I'd rather I I still want to get I'm working on space spacesuit 2.0 too, where I want it to be um, what's the word? Um. Like not, I don't want it to represent, you know, my current suit is from the USSR or from Russia. I think it's USSR because I think it's from like the eighties. I want it to be androgynous. Like I want it to be internationally androgynous. I want it to be representative. I want it to have little bits and pieces from all different suits, from all different nations, from all different programs to represent everyone. I think that's kind of what everyday astronaut is, is this us coming together. So I'd want that new space suit to maybe go see Earthrise. Screw that old one. That was a, a relic of war. I'd much rather have a suit that represents all of humanity with some like earth badges or something. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, dang. Sodak Zach. Guys, holy cow. What do you do? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sodak Zach. What? Guys, what are you doing? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, you make space so understandable for this South Dakotan. If you're ever in Sioux Falls, I have a nice place for you to stay with a full podcast setup. That's very generous. Thank you so much, Sodak Zach. Dang it, guys. This isn't supposed to be one of those mornings where I'm contemplating all of life now and having to have like this solid minute of reflection about uh, thankfulness. But yeah, thank you. Really. That's unbelievably generous you do not need to do that um you guys sharing this content and uh, and coming in and and being here with me so i can literally i would be watching this by myself and i had been for years before this so just you guys being here is literally the support i need uh so that is beyond necessary thank you though uh it really does mean a lot oh man dang well, wow, what a morning. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm going to get ready to head out of here. I have work to do. I've got the stainless steel video I'm working on. Yeah. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, yeah, looks like Elon's back on Twitter talking about the tanks and the, the BFS of the Starship. I think I've got work to do. Probably some on Twitter. St if, do you guys like, I've been doing those, um, name that mission thing on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, be sure and find me or day astronaut, um, or just search everyday astronaut because or day is really stupid. It's the only way I could fit anything close to everyday astronaut on Twitter. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I will have new stuff, some more new stuff up in the shop. Just a reminder. Um, the shop has been growing like crazy. Uh, again, sticker pack 2.0 with removal for flight now. Um, moon lamps are still in stock. We're almost out of those though. So if you do like these little moon lamps, they're almost gone. They're really pretty and make for pretty night lights. I have one at my bedside. 
Um, these are awesome too. Falcon family shirts. I don't know. Nope, I'm not wearing one. I'm wearing this one though. Future Martian shirts. Uh, big fan of these. So yeah, be sure and check that stuff out. And uh, Ernesto, thank you so much, Ernesto. And Randy, what? Got to plug the Patreon with the Discord. Guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Randy. I don't even know what else to say at this point. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon and actually continue to support what I do, patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Um, that stuff means the world to me, too. Um, so thank you. That's especially in the world of YouTube. You know, you can have months that are like $20 a month versus some months that are really, really good. Um, but it's, it's inconsistent, especially sometimes like when I went to New Zealand, when I was going down to California twice in a row, like literally back to back, my output of videos wasn't actually very high. I didn't have a lot of traffic. I didn't do very well on YouTube, but because I had Patreon support, I knew I was going to be able to <laughs> financially be able to afford to do those things and make it worth the effort of going down, you know, spending an hour with the CEO of rocket lab, um, going inside dragon capsule, doing that kind of stuff. Um, I knew it would be worth it because I had the support of the community. So if you want to help, make sure. I'm going down to so many launches this year, guys. I'm going to hopefully be going down for DM1, DM2, OFT1, uh, basically all, all demonstration flights of, of Boeing and SpaceX, probably the abort test, probably a Falcon Heavy launch, probably a Rocket Lab launch. Like there's six or seven launches I, I want to try to attend this year. If you guys want me to be there, uh, I'm working on an awesome mobile live stream solution, a really good mobile live stream solution. So I'll be able to bring this quality of broadcast out to those launches. Uh, the best way to, if you really do want me to do that is uh, patreon.com slash everyday astronaut. That's, that's the thing that makes sure that I'm able to always do that. So thank you, Randy. Thank you. Heavy cream. I hear you. What if we accidentally campaign to you to get dear moon trip? Uh, scares me but thank you heavy cream it scares me we'll see i don't know i don't know uh ernesto will start this year a mechanical engineer degree at 37 years old in part because of the channel no way ernesto that is unbelievable uh everyone say a quick congratulations to ernesto that is super 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 cool um that is genuinely awesome so um that's, I, I wish, I, I've even debated going back to school just because I really do, I would love to become an engineer at this point. Like, I think it's it's really important. But at the same time, like, I, I do understand that I have this position of being an everyday person. And I think my skill set is definitely kind of being, you know, a professional cheerleader slash someone that regurgitates crazy things and, and tries to make them fun and understandable. So maybe I don't need to go to college for that, but I'm so excited when other people do invest in that invest in our future as humanity that's huge and that's amazing so congratulations ernesto that's awesome um thank you for putting in that hard work for all of us adam thank you and so Zach zach had to knock down randy and con space is important but so is what you do well thank you guys so much uh you guys are amazing you guys are the best i'm gonna get out of here so i can get some work done because i have literally an unbelievable amount of work to, to get done um, and I'm really excited about it too. So I have to learn all about heating and temperature gradients and all that stuff. It's going to be crazy. Thank you. Intelligent intuition too. getting in right before the end. And Christopher, thank you guys. You guys are, you guys are way too generous today. Literally. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sincerely. Thank you guys so much. Uh, stay tuned. Be sure to follow me on Twitter guys. I'm very active on Twitter, uh, especially with some of these new fun things we're doing, some of these games and stuff. Um, so twitter.com slash erday astronaut or just search everyday astronaut. Follow me there. Come say hi. Guys, uh, that's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut bringing space down to earth for everyday people. Bye everybody. Thank you.